Today on Twin Cam, we're looking at a car that ever since its launch nearly seven years ago has been very firmly on my bucket list. But I've never actually seen one on the road because for us Brits, it's very much a forbidden fruit. As far as I can work out, this is the only affordable mid-engine rear drive sports car being produced globally. What else could it be other than the Honda S660. The Honda Motor Company is intrinsically linked to the K car, and in particular, the K sports car. Shoshiro Honda founded his company in the ruins of Japan following the Second World War, and developed it over the next decade and a half into a world leader for motorcycles. When the 1960s came around, he took the leap into four-wheel production, launching the T360K truck, an S500 sports car, in 1963. Through the remainder of the decade, the S500 was evolved into the S600, then S800, as Honda also began racing their cars, from national series in Japan all the way up to Formula One. In 1967, Honda launched their first non-sporting passenger car, the N360, and the rest, as they say, is history. But Honda Sands Company has its foundation in sports cars, and K sports cars in particular. Following the end of S800 production in 1970, Honda would be without a sports car for 20 years until the NSX supercar was shown to the world. But a return to Honda's bread and butter of K sports cars was just around the corner, as in 1991, the mid-engined Honda Beat was unveiled. The wonderful little Beat was part of a series of K sports cars launched in the early 1990s, alongside the likes of the Suzuki Cappuccino and Mazda's Autozam AZ1. Suzuki's tiny sports car carried the basic mechanical layout of the old Honda S models of the 60s, while the AZ1 and Beat went for the layout with modern supercar prowess, mounting their engines transversely inches from the driver's back, powering the rear wheels. The S name would be revived in 1999 along the flanks of the S2000, a reinvention of the S800's recipe with all its mechanical majesty, but as a much larger, more powerful sports car. The Beat, therefore, was the only car linking the original run of Honda sports cars to the modern age. That was until 2015, when the S name returned to the K car frame. Though sharing little with the original run of S sports cars, the Beat and S660 are very much the modern interpretation of the format, with their engineering tuned perfectly towards both economy in construction and performance in design. The S660 follows the recipe set by the Beat almost to the letter, and thanks to the very nature of the K-Car class, their engine capacities, dimensions and power outputs are almost identical. But does that mean that this is merely a rehash of an idea from 30 years ago? Absolutely not. This mini NSX we have in front of us is an incredibly focused and pure sports car and, as far as I can tell, is kind of Honda's love letter to itself. The mid-2010s were a brilliant, if controversial, period of hot Hondas. The S660 and second generation NSX debuted in 2015 and 2016 respectively, both carrying this now characteristic Marmite modern Honda style, and they were followed up in 2017 by the FK8 Civic Type R, causing even more controversy and a general ruffling of feathers. The NSX had been in the works for years and had a huge enthusiast backing, but as Honda's Halo model, it had to appear to be at the cutting edge of technology, and the expectation of enthusiasts was so huge that disappointment was bound to occur, no matter what the final product looked like. The Civic Type R was bound to carry this mad design language, but in jazzing up what was already an overstyled car, the Type R became a little too brash. On the contrary, the S660 is almost perfect. 
It's not a pretty car, but it is a very cool car. And that's what counts. There was no expectation, no need to please higher-ups, and no good impressions to make. The design team could just make a car that was incredibly focused on the job in hand, and have fun in doing so. The stylist did an exceptional job in making such a tiny car appear so beefy and powerful, without giving it small man syndrome. It also seems completely aware of its size through the big smiley grill and complete disregard for practicality. In fact, that smiley grill means that, while clearly looking like a mini NSX, it lacks completely the aggression of its big brother. And that helps tremendously with character building. The wheels are shoved right up into the corners of the car, and with the tiny footprint naturally comes a slightly higher side profile. But add to that the huge buttresses on the engine cover, and the S660 has a squatted stance. Sporting and purposeful, but still the kind of stance that people smile at and go, aww, and that's perfect. It also shouts out about its mid-engine layout, not only thanks to the buttresses, but also due to the little air intakes behind the doors, and of course the gap between the passenger cell and rear axle. Add to that the grills at the back of the car, the vents behind the front wheels, and the angled slashes down the side profile, and it all has the grit of a supercar, without the pretenses. And it's all balanced out by the fact that the S660 has no huge splitters, no wings, and no skirts. This car was a passion project, driven by the heritage we discussed earlier, but in a completely modern way. Suggested, but not at all defined by it. But in this theatre of heritage, the S660 is infused with inherent youth, as Honda appointed 22-year-old Ryu Mukamoto as the car's development manager, the youngest person ever to fill that role, and frankly makes me feel like a bit of a failure. But let's take that knowledge and use it to understand why this car exists in the first place, and also why I think that it is the coolest car in the world on sale right now. Let's start then at the beginning with the K-Car class itself. If you don't already know, Keiji Dosha is Japanese for light automobile. And since 1949, the Japanese government has offered certain benefits for the buyers of cars that fit within a very tight set of regulations, including dimensions, engine capacity, and power output. The easy ways for a layperson to identify K cars are the yellow number plates they wear, and for a run of the mill model, they're usually the weird tiny box cars you see absolutely everywhere in Japan. In fact, K cars are so popular in Japan that in 2013 they held a record 40% market share, and in 2018, seven of Japan's top 10 best sellers were K cars. It makes perfect sense, therefore, for manufacturers to make tiny sports cars that fit within those regulations. The zenith of the K sports car, as I see it, was the early 1990s with the small selection of cars I name checked earlier. But by the early 2010s, there was only one K sports car left, the Daihatsu Kopen, which is front-wheel drive. There was a clear opportunity, therefore, for Mukumoto-san, who was too young to have experienced the early 90s, to get a slice of the proper K sports car genre. And this is what he came up with. As I mentioned earlier, the dimensions are only marginally larger than those of the Beat. 339 centimeters long and 147 centimeters wide. For context, that's 52 centimeters shorter and 26 centimeters narrower than the current Mazda MX-5. Similarly, the wheels are only 15s, but they are perfectly in proportion for such a tiny car. Without laboring the point here, I'm only five foot nine, and this car makes me look like Peter Crouch. But regardless of the regulation that requires the S660 to be so small, that does allow the curb weight to be kept to a minimum. Despite all the modern admissions and safety equipment, it weighs only a feather more than my Metro, at 830 kilograms, 
And that figure, as we all know, plays a big part in how playful, how agile and how well a car drives. And that brings us neatly onto the underpinnings. And there's nothing that's actually very exotic about any of that. What it does have is a fair wealth of aluminium thrown into the construction, and that does help to keep weight down, while the S660's shell and subframes are stiffer than those of the old S2000. The suspension at all four corners are struts, and braking is discs at all four corners with two piston calipers and solid discs. And the reason for this level of engineering is purely cost, sharing parts with Honda's other two passenger K cars. The N1 and N box are where the S660 sources most of its engineering from, and the centerpiece to that being this little S series engine, branded as Earth Dreams. How very Honda. This teeny 12 valve twin overhead cam 3 pot, regardless of the car it's placed in, is designed specifically for use in K cars, so it comes only in one capacity, 656cc. This also helps it be as light and as compact as possible, as it has to be to stay within the regulations. But what that also adds is just a dash of engineering purity and engineering focus that makes this engine perfect for going into a tiny little sports car. There's no surplus material line about here to allow its conversion into a bigger capacity. But the simplicity in its construction is nothing to complain about, and sharing components with Honda's other K cars is likely the only reason the S660 can exist, as it would have been too dear to develop otherwise. What this does mean is a serious bargain. In Japan, the S660 starts at about the equivalent of £14,850. With a price tag like that, I'd have been saving up. As I've mentioned, the Beaton S660 share a lot of their philosophy, but with the restrictions on K-car power plants, the way in which the two cars reach their maximum power output is rather different. While the old Beat had individual throttle bodies, the S660 utilises a turbocharger, meaning two things. The first is 63 brake horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 104 Newton meters of torque at 2,600 revs. The second is that it sounds like a mini Skyline GTR, and thanks to the fact that it was designed by Honda, it revs to 7,700 RPM. From inside the cabin, you can also hear the turbocharger spooling, as it's right behind your ears, and because Honda installed this little window, which can be lowered and is designed to allow all the noises from the engine bay through into the cabin. I had to show the inelegance of that because, well, it's a sports car and it's a really, really tiny sports car. As I said before, I'm only 5 foot 9 and I don't really fit. If you're anything over about 5 foot 10, I don't think you could genuinely be comfortable in here. This driver's seat is all the way back, pressed right up against the bulkhead. And there's no adjust for reaching the steering, but the steering wheel is far too close to me and the pedals are far too close to me. But really, despite the fact that the driving position isn't right, it's all too close, the basics kind of are there apart from that. So the steering wheel is kind of at the perfect height, though it is adjustable for reach. The dials are right in my line of sight. You feel low, the scuttle panel is very high, the doors are very high, the seats are very buckety and hold you in perfectly, not too tightly as to feel uncomfortable, but just right to make sure that you don't wallow about while you're cornering. The steering wheel itself is leather wrapped and has cool stitching on it, and it's absolutely the perfect size. The steering wheel is really quite tiny. The pedals are positioned perfectly for heel and towing, um, but the main attraction with the controls really are the transmissions. This car has the correct choice, a six-speed manual. There is also a CVT available that has seven selected ratios, but that kind of defeats the point of having a CVT. But the reason that is available is obviously for usability, and also because Honda's K cars are engineered to use CVTs, which means that this manual transmission has been engineered specifically for 
the S660. And what that means is that this is the quickest, most precise, snickertiest throw I have ever experienced in a car ever. It is an incredible gear change. And even the gear knob itself is aluminium with leather wrapped around it so that it doesn't feel too cold. But it just feels so incredibly pure. Sports car driving positions generally aren't perfect. They've always been historically a compromise and this car is no different to that, but it just kind of feels so well designed to have fun in. It's not perfect, but that's a good thing. It gives the car character. Further along that pure sports car way of thinking, there is only one physical gauge and that's a rev counter and it's right in front of you. Again, it's focused, it's designed to be a sports car, nothing else. There are no screens in the centre of the car. This is a car that debuted in 2015. You only get two tiny little screens to the side of your tachometer. In the centre, you don't even get a proper radio. You just get your climate controls and a couple of inputs for some music if you really want it. It's all controlled through the steering wheel. And the reason this has been done is because the engineers were very particular. They realised that Japanese sports cars are so well loved all across the world, but especially in Japan. And this car is one of those cars as well. It's going to live on. It's going to, although it was only available in Japan, it's going to be a classic very, very soon, really. And they didn't want this interior to feel outdated at all quickly. And frankly, they've done a really good job of that. There is nothing in here that would instantly age the car. Maybe the little screens around the tachometer might look a little bit poor in a few years, but they weren't designed to be that brilliant in the first place. They were designed to just be functional, to show you the information you need and not be flashy. And that's the reason this might actually just work as a completely timeless classic. The S660 was launched in 2015 and unfortunately is set to be discontinued in 2022. And although the Western markets have been denied its magnificence, we can at least celebrate it here before the affordable mid-engine sports car dies for good. For a while, there was a rumour that Honda would put a one litre engine in it for export, but unfortunately it just never happened. But if we were allowed access to this brilliant little car, I can't imagine how different the UK youth car scene might be. In the UK market, there is only one affordable little sports car, the Mazda MX-5. But the problem with that is that it's actually too big and too powerful for any real young drivers to want to buy brand new. There is a clear underlying current of young non-enthusiasts that want a sports car, but they just aren't available brand new. And that's a point that matters to a lot of people. Affordability seems to be something that has left the minds of all European car manufacturers when it comes to desirable cars, not to mention the insurance. Which is why if Honda had brought the S660 to the UK, especially in its 660cc form, it might have just become really quite popular. But reality dictates that it's all academic. And on that note, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please do click like and subscribe to TwinCam as well. I'm forever indebted to my wonderful Patreon supporters, so if you'd like to support me that way, then please do follow the link in the description. And I'll have more videos coming along soon.